State of Greater Lebanon French Protection On May 21, 1250, King of France St. Louis, sent a letter to the Maronite Patriarch of Lebanon saying, We are convinced that the nation you represent, is part of the French nation. Because, his friendship with the French is very similar, to that of the French towards the French. We promise to protect you, and your people. And we commit ourselves, to do all that is necessary for your well-being. In 1860, France intervened militarily in Lebanon, to protect the Christians victims of massacres, committed by the Druze, in collusion with the Turks. It only withdrew from Lebanon after signing a new pact, appointed a Christian governor, and made Mount Lebanon independent and autonomous. Turkey and the European countries signed this new agreement, which is later known as the 1860 Protocol, and remained in force until 1920. Turkey violates the protocol. After Turkey's involvement in the First World War with Germany, Jamal Basha imposed martial law in Lebanon, seized the property of foreigners, and abolished the privileges of the clergy. He committed a serious step by dislodging the Christian governors, without the consent of the European Union, signatory countries of the protocol with Turkey. Last but not least, Jamal Basha removes the independence of Mount Lebanon, and made it an Ottoman state. From then on, Turkish tyranny was practiced against the citizens. And famine, displacement, and murder spread throughout the country. <music> Defeat of the Turks the Battle of Jamal Basha failed on the Suez Canal, on August 6, 1916, following General Allenby's military tour. He made the Turks believe that his main strike would be in Nablus, where the Ottoman army had been preparing with all its strength. However, Allenby surprised them from the coast, and occupied all Palestine on September 12, 1918 forcing the Turks to retreat north, leaving Beirut, Damascus, and other areas, in the hands of the Allies. Beginning of the Mandate The first units of the French army, land at the port of Beirut on October 7th, 1918. The next day, a British military contingent, arrived by the coastal road from Palestine. On October 11, 1918, the Allied High Command, appoints French military governors in Beirut and other cities. The Mount Lebanon Government Council, chaired by Habib Pasha al-Saud, remains unchanged, at least in the early days of the mandate. The New Regime 
The French was facing two difficult choices, concerning the government of Mount Lebanon. Either they must solve it, and establish a French military government in its place, as they did with the Arab government of Omar al dauk in Beirut. Or recognize it and let it run the country, but the replacement of the government of Babda, by a French military government, could encourage the Lebanese to doubt, the good intentions of France towards their independence, and demonstrate that Damascus, promotes the independence of Lebanon more than France. Consequently, the French commissioner went to Bekerke on October 23, 1918, to consult the Patriarch Maronite about the Lebanese government. A new formula was adopted, ignoring all the administrative arrangements, made by Major General Shukri al in Babda, a few weeks ago. Celebration of Babda On October 25, 1918, a ceremony was held in the Sorai of Babda, to formally announce the agreement reached, with the Maronite Patriarch. Thus. France restored power in Lebanon as it was in 1914, and Habib Pasha retains the post of Prime Minister, but was replaced by a French officer as governor. Sykes-Picot Treaty In 1916, the Treaty of Sykes-Picot divided the colonies of the Ottoman Empire, and granted France the power to mandate Lebanon, Syria, northern Iraq, and other provinces. In the autumn of 1918, French forces completed their settlements, in most of the areas agreed at Sykes-Pico, pending approval of the peace conference. <music> Arab Disagreement The conflict of international interests led to the division of Arabs among themselves. Their differences focused on three projects. The first project is based on the creation of a unified Arab kingdom, including Syria, Mesopotamia, Hejaz, and the Arabian Peninsula. But this project was strongly opposed by Britain, and failed. The second project, would be the creation of an independent Arab Kingdom, composed only of Greater Syria. Once again, the British have expressed their reservations, especially with regard to Palestine, and the Christians of Lebanon, strongly opposed the project, and also failed. The third project, is based on the creation of two independent states, namely the state of Lebanon with its current borders, plus the areas that were expropriated at the time of the Turks. And a second state Syria, that includes the rest of Greater Syria. This project was supported by Christians of Lebanon, but rejected by its Muslims. Syrian Union Conference In 1919, the Syrians adopted a dangerous decision, to annex Mount Lebanon to the Syrian Union, when they allocated seven seats to Mount Lebanon, in the General Conference, which will be the parliament of the new state of Syria. Position of France 
In the spring of 1919, France definitively adopted the principle of Lebanon independence, provided that Lebanon accepted the French mandate. The Lebanese would not have rejected this mandate, if it protected their independence, from the nascent Arab monarchist movement, and did not affect the essence of Lebanese sovereignty. Lebanon and France have agreed to work together, to tackle the monotheistic projects developed by the Arabs, the British, and the Americans. Declaration of Independence The first fruits of the Franco-Lebanese Agreement, appeared in the Declaration of the Government of Babda, on May 30, 1919, which stipulated the following. 1. To demand the political and administrative independence of Lebanon, and the return of its areas expropriated in the past. 2. The government in Lebanon will be democratic, and based on freedom and equality, while preserving the rights of minorities, and freedom of religion. 3. The Lebanese government has agreed, with the French government, to strengthen economic relations between Lebanon and neighboring countries. 4. To study and write, the new Lebanese constitution. Five, to submit this agreement, to the peace conference. Six, these decisions should be published in the official gazette, and other national newspapers, in order to inform the Lebanese people of its contents, and to reassure them, that their rights are safeguarded. Towards Paris Conference The first Lebanese delegation, arrived in Paris on February 15, 1919, under the presidency of Dawood Amoun, who claimed before the conference committee, the independence of Lebanon, under the high patronage of France. In August 22, 1919, the French capital receives the second delegation, headed by Patriarch Elias Howick, who at the time was named Patriarch of Lebanon, in reference to his national role, after being instructed by the Parliament, to lead the delegation, and to speak on behalf of all the Lebanese people. The Patriarch met with French President Raymond Poincaré. The Prime Minister George Clemenceau, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and other officials, pleading for the independence and freedom of Lebanon. On February 11, 1920, the third delegation arrived in Paris. Its mission was to resist the attempts to annex Lebanon to Syria, and to restore the areas violated illegally, by the Turks. But above all, to proclaim the independence of Lebanon, under the French mandate. Independent Lebanon region, so Syria, does not recognize Lebanon's historical borders. Third, Syria recognizes the independence of the province of Mount Lebanon, and allows him to manage its internal of fame to same. Fourth, this administrative independence generously granted to Lebanon, by the Syrians, is subordinated to the rejection, of any external intervention in its affairs, implying of course, the French intervention. Conditions, which Jamal Basha did not dare to impose on Lebanon, even, at the praise of his power.
Reaction to the Syrian Action The Lebanese government met on March 22, 1919, in the presence of the French governor Major Le Brugge, and decided the following. First, declare the independence of Lebanon, including its historical borders, with the support of France. Second, to protest against the content of the Syrian conference document, which affects the independence, freedom, and borders of Lebanon. Third, the government considers that, the Lebanese participating in the Syrian conference, are not representative, and do not express the will of the Lebanese people. Fourth, a new constitution must be drafted, to replace the current formula. To do this, a legal committee should be set up, to study its content. Fifth, to design the Lebanese flag, and publish it everywhere. As a result, massive manifestations took place in most Lebanese regions. The crowd wanted to express their rejection, of the Syrian interference, and also to show their support, to the government for the proclamation of the independence of Lebanon, with the French blessing. It should be noted, that the French governor and members of the government, took part in the manifestation, alongside the citizens. The appearance of Major Le Brugge was a meaningful political position, but also, a warning message for Damascus rulers. Syrian-Lebanese Agreement One day, Napoleon said, Politics come from the womb of history, history come from the womb of geography, and geography never change. The geographical reality between Lebanon and Syria, as well as the common economic interest, forced both parties to compromise, and agree to survive. Syria has temporarily hidden, its historical ambitions of annexing Lebanon, and Lebanon has accepted the opening, to his natural neighbor, which is the only artery linking him, to the Arab countries. After a long negotiation behind the scenes, away from the eyes of the tender mother, the two rival brothers reached the following agreement. 1. The recognition of the complete, and absolute independence of Lebanon. 2. The political neutrality of Lebanon, which can neither fight, nor be fight, and refuse any outside interference. 3. The return of lands previously removed from Lebanon, under an agreement between the two countries. 4. The economic relations will be studied, and approved by a common committee. 5. The two sides will work together, to convince other countries, to accept the ratification of this agreement, and its implementation. Birth of Greater Lebanon On September 1st, 1920, General Guro standing in the courtyard, of the Palace of Pines in Beirut, announcing the birth of the state of Greater Lebanon, in the presence of Patriarch Elias Hawiak, Maukti of Beirut Mustafa Naja, and a large crowd of representatives of the state, religious, and French officers. Guro said, With great pride and joy, I declare the birth of Greater Lebanon. On behalf of France, I salute him in his greatness and strength, from the Great River, to the gates of Palestine, passing by the peaks of eastern Lebanon. To the work people of Lebanon, and if you want to be a free people, aspiring to become a great people, you have duties to accomplish. 
The first of these beauties, and the most sacred, is the union, the title of your greatness, just as the sectarian differences, were the greatest cause of your weakness, in the past. Long live France, and long live the state of Greater Lebanon. Independence On November 22, 1943, Lebanon gained full independence, following an uprising led by Lebanese nationalists, with broad popular support. The last French soldier left Lebanese territory, at the end of 1946, but the French-Lebanese relations, remained distinct, and solid. Paris continued to help Lebanon in various fields, knowing that, what France had provided for Lebanon, during the mandate period is invaluable, whether is it a legal matter, cultural or political, educational or military. <music> Lebanon still enjoys, what the French have built for him as laws, institutions, schools, universities, hospitals, and other important holdings, which have contributed to the prosperity of Lebanon, and its citizens to the present day. <music> building a state is one thing, but building an identity is another one. At first glance, it seemed that the formula, according to which the Lebanese had chosen to live together, was viable. They even dreamed, of offering it as a model to neighboring countries, and why not? To the whole world. Neither pro-Western, nor pro-Eastern, as some would like to say. It was also said, that Muslims, had abandoned the claim of union with Syria, in exchange, for the abandonment of French protection proclaimed, by Christians. Both parties, consider that each has made concessions, to achieve this magic formula of, living together, while everyone had, what he feared the other. Because the nations cannot be built, in a climate of mistrust, between its communities, so the 1943 formula was apparently, a common agreement, but at bottom, it was only a common lie. This is not at all a slanderous conclusion, and whoever does not want to bury one's head in the sand, he has only to review, the series of small wars, that have occurred between, the children of the virtual nation, since independence, until the big explosion, of April 13, 1975. Centenary of Greater Lebanon 100 years after the birth of Greater Lebanon Will the Lebanese dare to acknowledge their failures? And so, to write their history as it is, neither more nor less, and without compromise or hypocrisy? If they do, they will give their future generation, a real chance to dream of a better future, than the history of their ancestors. <laughs>